All right, welcome here. Here is my breadboard, and let me show you around what we have here. The main point of this little series of videos is twofold. One, this is a DS1307 real-time clock and its backup battery. We're going to be looking at how to use the output from a DS1307 to produce a crystal-controlled square wave. That square wave, which comes out here, will be fed into a couple of CD4040 12-stage ripple counters, or should I say 12-stage frequency dividers. This will provide a series of precision square waves for whatever use you may have. It also demonstrates how ripple counter works. This is one CD4040, it's a 16 pin dip. This is another. The input is on pin 10 from the DS1307. The final output divided by 4096 is fed into the input of a second CD4040. So you can hook these in series. In the case of these two, I have a 24 stage divider that I can pick off anywhere I want to pick it off. This is my 5 volt input. Over here is the RS-232 board that I made to connect to my pickaxe. You do not need a pickaxe for this program. This works just as well with a Arduino. And this is the switch and this is just a simple switch. It's connected to one of the input pins on the pickaxe. All right, here's a wiring diagram where I built my own DS1307 clock board, 8-pin dip, of course, serial clock, serial data, battery, 32 kilohertz crystal, and VCC. Pin 7 is your square wave output. That is turned on and off, and the frequency out that, that it outputs is determined by a single byte in the register in the DS1307. All right, just a brief look. This is how my pickaxe is connected. This is switch uh, to ground. It's pulled high through a 10K resistor. That would be pin C.5. Here is my serial dat I2C serial data, serial clock, and one hertz in. The rest of it we don't use. All right, here's the internal block diagram to a DS1307. The only sections, <coughs> excuse me, we are interested in is this oscillator circuit where the crystal attaches, and it puts out one hertz for the uh, clock function, but it also puts out four other frequencies to a multiplexer buffer circuit. It could be one hertz. 4096 hertz, 8192 hertz, and 32768 hertz. One, one of these frequencies will come onto the square wave output. If you note it from before, that square wave output has to be pulled high through a resistor. And that's all we're interested in. It's it's controlled from a single single register. And while you're using the square wave output, your rest of your clock operates as it normally does, keeping time, date, and so forth. I assume that you uh, have some familiar with familiarity with the registers in a DS1307 on the web page. I have the spec sheet. You can read it. I am concerned only with register 0x07. Let's go over what we have here. It's an 8-bit register. Bit 7 determines the output level of the, by the way, the output on this is an open drain MOSFET. That will determine whether it's turned off or on. Bit 6 and 7 is not used. Bit 4 if set to 1, turns on the square wave output. If it's set to 0, it is turned off. 
We're interested in bits 0 and bit 1, as shown in the chart down here, RS0 and RS1. 0, 0 is 1 hertz. 0 and 1 is 4 kilohertz. 1 and 0 is 8 kilohertz, as shown. 1 and 1 gives you the 32.768 kilohertz directly from the clock crystal. This is a neat way to produce a precision time base for other uses. In this one, I happen to be using it through some dividers to show how the dividers work. Here's the output of a little pickaxe program that I wrote. The reason I use pickaxe for this hardware development, it's flexible, easy to program, and so forth, while not as popular and costs more than some cheap Arduino clone. I think it just works better, but this is not about pickaxe. This is not about the pickaxe. Nonetheless, I wrote a little menu here. I can select one through five with five turning the square wave completely off. If I select two, I write the appropriate byte to register seven to uh, output 4,000 4,096 hertz or 4.096 kilohertz. All right, here's just a simple, quick and dirty program to program the uh, register 7 and the DS1307 from a pickaxe. No big deal. You SW1 that you saw in the very first part of the video connected to C5. Well, SW1 is pin C.5. B0 is just a one byte of static RAM. And this is the setup routine here for connecting the I2C out of the pickaxe to the DS1307. That comes out to zero. Okay, and the main program is here. It's going to wait for me. It's pulled high. So if it's going to continually check SW1, as long as it's high, it's just going to loop right back to main. And this little bitty, when I press this, it will load this value into temp. In this case, it's for 4096 hertz. Then it'll write that value to register 7. And then go back to main and wait for me to press the switch again. As far as that goes, you can use these following listed values down here for temp to get you the frequency output that you want. Number five down here will turn it off because bit four here is turned off. And this will leave the output high because I would still have that pull-up resistor to VCC. And if I leave it high, I'm not wasting any current when I turn it off. Okay, just a quick look back at my pickaxe. Same thing holds true if you've wrote this for Arduino. I have a 1 hertz coming in from the DS1307 square wave output, or I can use a different frequency and divide it down with the CD4040 um, divider chip. Nonetheless, you have to have that working or the clock program that you'll see next won't work. All right, here's the output on a terminal. This is just a picture of it. It's not live. But every time I get a one hertz pulse come in, it's uh, it'll print out the time on the terminal. And that pulse comes from the one hertz input, either from the DS1307 directly or through the divider circuits. You can download this particular program from my website. The link is here. You can have the address of the web page to get this information. Okay, that completes this part of the video. You're looking at the internal block diagram of a CD4040 12 stage, 12 stage ripple binary counter. That we will focus on that in the next video. In the next video, and this is just a clip from it, we will also be looking at the actual square wave outputs on a USB oscilloscope. So thanks for listening to this. Uh, 
visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Hit the like button if you would. Thanks a lot.